couple of plays, threw a ball in the end, got caught in the line of defense, scored, ran out of time. Crazy, right at the end. I was about to get to give up on him. Yeah. Okay. Did Notre, Notre Dame take lose? Yeah, they lost. Yeah, because I was watching that a little bit.
kind of went right by the the uh, World Evangelism Broadcast offering. And aren't you excited that we are broadcasting the good news of the gospel to the Church of the Nazarene in over 90 languages? Isn't that awesome? Amen. And so we want to honor you. If you are having a birthday or a wedding anniversary in the month of October, we're going to sing to you. Mr. Jason's going to come up and hold the basket, and your offering goes to World Evangelism Broadcast. Or if you even want to just celebrate that NMI is celebrating 108 years today. All right, NMI birthday today, 108 years. NMI is Nazarene Missions International. So if you want to give an offering in honor of of Nazarene Missions International and their birthday. We'd like you to do that as well. All right, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. Who tells the sun to rise every morning? Is the 
I'm sorry. That was inappropriate, and um, it's it's just been one of those. It's just been one of those really tough times. I'm just so. My God, he's so big, so strong, and so mighty. My God, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. Amen. <clears throat>
we desire for you to remind us that you are with us. Remind us that you are with us all along the way of life. All along the way of life. And for that I thank you. Heavenly Fathers, I watch the events in Israel. Heavenly Fathers, I watch the events in Israel unfold in the news. Really at a loss for words, so much violence. Really at a loss for words, so, so much, much violence. Hurting, so much fear. So much hurting, so I much fear. Those in Israel and in Palestine. I imagine those in Israel and in Palestine must be experiencing right now. I pray that you protect those who are. And I pray that you protect those who are in the midst of the escalation of violence. That you would shelter people. That you would shelter people from harm and get families to safety and shield them from uh, with your peace and protection. And though we do not know what will happen, and though we do not know what will happen in the next few days, I do know that you have protected them in the past. I do know that you have protected them in the past. You are the God of the nation of Israel. You are the God of the nation of Israel. You protected them from enemies throughout history. You protected them from enemies throughout history. And you will not fail to do so now. We continue to lift up the nation of Israel. We continue to lift up the nation of Israel to you and trust that you will set everything right with your righteous hand in your time. Father, I pray today for Father, I pray today for Jeanette's uncle and, and family who pray God that you would provide for them and that they would know the peace of your presence and your provision as well as your healing touch. Thank you for all of those today who are worshiping. Thank you for all of those today who are worshiping online with us. And while they are not here in our midst, and while they are not here in our midst and experiencing the atmosphere that we are right now. The atmosphere that we are right now. I know that it can be so and will be so as they turn their eyes upon you in the privacy of their homes or wherever they're with us today. So I pray your special touch upon each one. Oh Lord, we love you. Oh Lord, we love you. Again for the joy. Uh, thank you again for the joy of knowing you. To say that we for the privilege to say that we are indeed children of the King. And I pray now that you would open our eyes and our hearts to the truth of your words. I ask in Jesus' name and together the church say amen. Amen. When driving, especially in town, I try to avoid the high traffic areas whenever possible. Most drivers, however, choose the shortest, easiest, most convenient course of travel. Sitting in traffic, honking the horn, constantly changing lanes in search of the quickest way to arrive at their destination of work or fun. Uh, but I like uh, roads less travel. But I like the roads less travel. No stress. Scenery. Often beautiful scenery. Quiet, as I said. Go in by the Jesus gate. said, for the Go in by the narrow gate, for the wide gate has a broad road which leads to disaster, and there are many people going that way. The narrow gate and the hard road lead out into life, and only a few are finding it. Of course, it has its challenges. Of course, it has its challenges. We you know, denying self, carrying crosses, denying self, standing strong in the face of temptation. But it's the best way and the right way because it is God's way. This month we will discover some lessons to be learned from April, who chose to take the road less traveled. Humankind. And by the way of a 
brief and by the way of a brief this brief genealogy we're introduced to a man named Abram a woman named Sarah a woman named Sarah and a man named Lot I think those three are particularly mentioned because I think those three are particularly mentioned because they're going to be become important personages in the story over the next few chapters uh, Abram's father uh, Abram's father was named Terah. He had two other sons, Nahor and, he had two other sons, Nahor and Haran. Was now Lot was a son of Haran, so he was the nephew of Abram. In other words, Haran and Abram were brothers. All right? Family thing. Those two, those two. Yeah, family thing. Those, two, those uh, family connections, family trees that get me, my mind just goes in circles. And a third cousin and a third cousin who was removed, a third cousin removed. Because he was mean, even bad, and nasty, and we didn't like him, so we just had him removed. <laughs> and so, these are mentioned in the genealogy, and then we come to chapter 12. And these are the words we read. And these are the words we read. The Lord had said to Abram, The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. It's just kind of matter of fact. It's just kind of matter of fact. History. We don't have any other history of Abram. What kind of life he was living. We don't have any, uh, don't have any uh, evidence, biblical evidence, that there was a connection between Abram and God. So the first thing we really know about so the first thing we really know about them is when God said, leave the country. Leave the country. Pick up your family and go to a land that I will show you. Some of you have absolutely no idea what this is like. My experience really isn't at the level. My experience really isn't at the level of Abraham, certainly. But I can tell you that pastoral ministry. Uh, but I can tell you that pastoral ministry is a little bit like this. Other than five years that we lived. Other than five years that we lived a couple of hours from Connie's parents and where where Connie grew up. All the rest of our years of ministry, we've not. All the rest of our years in ministry, we've not lived close to our, our parents. Or to our homeland, or, or to our friends that we knew growing up. And even now we live. And even now we live four hours or so from our children, our grandkids, and our grandkids. And it's not always an easy road. And it's not always an easy road to tell you the truth. I remember coming here. I remember coming here. And and. One of the first people I met was Donna Freeman, uh, and then Johnny, and Donna Freeman, Freeman, and then Johnny, and, and I watched them, and just week after week, how, how they came to church, and how how they came to church, and their whole family was here with them, and many Sundays they'd go out to eat after after the service, and I thought, wow, I wish I could go out to eat with my mom. I wish I could go out to eat with my mom and dad. I wish I could. I wish our children were here so we could just take them all out to eat. See, we can't do that. We can't even go to church. See, we can't do that. We can't even go to church with our kids. I'm not trying to get pity points here. I'm not trying to get pity just points here. Just telling a little bit of what it's like. Just telling us a little bit of what it's like when God says, uproot your family from everything that's familiar and go to a place I will tell you later that is very unfamiliar to you. Because see, every time... Because see, every time I sense the Lord leading us to another ministry area, I hated it for my wife and my kids. I hated it for my wife and my kids. And their to leave their friends and their school to and, from everything. and to uproot from everything from the from the known, the unknown, an unknown and go to the unknown, an unfamiliar city, an unfamiliar people. We don't know how they do things in this town. And really an unfamiliar church, and we don't know how they do things in this church. We don't know anybody. We don't know anybody. And so I, I get, 
And so I, I get at least a taste of what Abram might have been going through. The only solace. The only solace. In being away from my family, and and not, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know how much detail I could reveal to you here, um, but but you know, if we live closer, we could go to the school. You know, if we live closer, we could go to the school plays and the chorus recitals, and, and maybe on a on a Saturday go to the zoo, or maybe go with the kids on a field trip with their school, or, you know. If we live closer, maybe we could go out to eat after church with them. Um, and the only real solace I and the only real solace I have is knowing, that I'm, is knowing that I'm in the center of God's will in my life. And I want to Amen. tell you that's enough. And I want to tell you that's enough. I'm doing what he wants me to do where he wants me to do it. I'm doing what he wants me to do where he wants me to do it for as long as he wants me to do it. And that's enough for me. That somehow, that eases, somehow eases the occasional pity party I might have. The occasional pity party I might have <laughs> that I don't live close to my kids. And it, you know it. I mean. And it, you know it. Connie and I mean. Great marriage. Connie and I have a great marriage. We have a great, great relationship. Great. But it wouldn't surprise me if one day there was a note saying, I'm going to go live with the kids for a month. <laughs> just wouldn't surprise me because she can do that now. David Livingston, great missionary, said, David Livingston, the great missionary, said this I'd rather be in the darkest jungles of Africa, inside the will of God, than on the throne of England, outside the will of God. Amen. And, and that's how I feel. So, so Abram, and, and so, so Abram as the Lord had told him, left as the Lord had told him, with God's promise echoing in his mind. Verse two. I will Verse make you two. A great nation. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples listen to this. And all the peoples listen to this. It can't, it, I can't imagine the Lord saying to me, all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Wow. Now, households in, in Bible times weren't like we have today. Family members rarely left the clan. Rarely Family members rarely left the clan, rarely left the country, rarely left so home. They just stayed, uh, and so they just stayed uh, having kids, and, kids and just stayed. keep having kids, and the kids so keep staying there. They have, they and don't so just have families. They, they, have, they don't just have families. They have households. They have clans. They have tribes. There are so many of them. And, and, and we are told and, what we are told here uh, is that Abram took his wife. Is that Abram took his wife, Lot, his and nephew all Lot, their possessions, and all their possessions, and get this, they had acquired, and the people they had acquired. And so I think what that means is maybe. And so I think what that means is maybe, kids maybe kids and grandkids and great grandkids and servants, maybe and servants. Maybe. Uh, and, and maybe people who just uh, and, and maybe people who just across the street showed up. You know, little Johnny from across the street showed up and never went home. <laughs> and there's really no way to know. And there's really no way to know there were how many not really any way there were. How large not really any way to know how large Abram's family was when they left to go to where God would show them later. We do have one clue. It's not a very good one. It doesn't assure us any accuracy. But in chapter 14, uh, we're told that Abram took his 318 trained men to go rescue Lot, who had been taken captive. So 318 trained men. 
So 318 trained so men. So we know there were that many. So we know there were that many. And those 318 men, most of them. And those 318 men, most of them likely had wives and children. And then there were the men who were not trained. And then there were the men who were not trained. Or the men who were too old or, or physically unable to fight in battle. And all the women and children. And all the women and children. And servants, maid servants, man servants, and I don't know when you when you start to think of it like that. Probably two thousand or three. There are probably two thousand or three thousand people in Abram's family. It was hard enough for me to say to my wife and to my kids, uh, "We're going to have to load the truck and move." But I cannot imagine telling three thousand people. We're leaving everything you know. Everything that makes you feel secure, everything that makes you feel secure and comfortable. And we're going to a place that you have no idea. I don't know where it is. Can you imagine? And then traveling? Can you imagine? And then traveling? With 3,000 people and all their possessions? Livestock? And that would include livestock? Probably didn't have cats, though. Probably didn't have cats, though. Thinking. <laughs> we have cats, we're not moving. <laughs> and when they said, you know, here And when they said, you know, here Dad, where are we going? You know, God hadn't revealed that to me yet. Dad, are you crazy? Dad, are you crazy? Hitting the sauce? Daddy been hitting the sauce? <laughs> let, let me ask you a question. Let, let me ask you a question this morning. How confident are you in God? Now I know what you want to say. Now I know what you want to say. Oh, I'm absolutely. I know that God can do anything. My God is so big, so great, and so mighty that there's nothing that God cannot do. And I know you believe that up here. And I know you believe that up here. My question is, do you believe it in your heart where it matters? In the heart where it matters. Do you really believe? Do you really believe that God can do anything? Even in your life. Even in there your so many, life. You know, I, I, know I mean, there are so many that say, you know, I, I know that God can't I still believe with them. Not for me. There are a lot of Christians who feel that way. There are a lot of Christians who feel that way. Do you have so much confidence in him? Do you have so much confidence in him that, it that you absolutely entrust absolutely everything to his care? To his care. And so Abram. And so Abram. Packed his suitcase. Packed his suitcase. Gathered up all his sheep. Donkey. Gathered up all his sheep and his donkeys and his cattle. And everybody who was connected with his family. And everybody who was connected with his family. And they began a journey. He followed the way he, he followed the way he believed God was leading him. Would you do that? Would you do that? You know, very often when I when I felt like God was saying, "You've taken this church as far as as I want you to take it. You need to go somewhere else." Usually, the first thing I'll do is is contact my district superintendent and let him know that I am beginning to to look for a place to go, hoping that maybe there's another church on the hoping that maybe there's another church on the district that would like to. Have a guy like me. <laughs> I had a friend. I have a friend. I had a friend. I have a friend. Um, fellow pastor. I really love this. And guy. I, I really love this guy. He, he's such a godly individual. Um, and he told me that that he felt like God. And he told me that that he felt like God was was calling into a. To, to leave where he had been for several years. 
I'd even had him come to the church. He did a prayer weekend for us. He, he led a prayer conference. And uh, our prayer retreat, maybe I should call it a little soda. And I said, so you're going coming closer to me. And I said, so you're going coming closer to me, right? He said, well, actually. No, we're going. No, we're going. And he named the city. Up north. Up north. I said, really? I said, really? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? He said, well, you know. He said, well, you know. We just, my wife and I just feel We like, just, my wife and I just feel like. We are too. We are too comfortable. And we need to go somewhere that we don't And we know. need to go somewhere that we don't know people on the no, district. No. And we don't really know the district superintendent. We don't really have any friends there. We just need to start from scratch. And we feel like that's what God is leading us to do. Can you imagine that? TJ can. TJ can. <laughs> Some of you can. Some of you have done that. Some of you can. Some of you have done that. But most of us, we go where we go where we're comfortable. We go where we know people. But I want to take that. But I want to tell you something. You know, but there was, uh, for years and years and years, I've been on uh, the District Board of Ministerial Studies. I was chairman for over 20 years. And, and I still remember one individual in particular uh, who, who said that he was called to preach. And that's our big thing. You've got to be able to articulate your call, not just a call to ministry, but your call to preach. If you want to be an ordained elder in the church of Nazarene, you need to be able to tell us that you have a call to preach. Anyway. And so, yeah, he has a call to preach. And so, yeah, he has a call to preach, and we were mo to monitor his studies. I remember in, in and, um, you, you I remember in, in the interview, we interviewed them once a year, and one year, somehow the question came up, somehow the question came up, if God was to call him, say, to California. Or even to somewhere else on the district would he go. Or even to somewhere else on the district would he go. Because he was he was the youth pastor or associate pastor in the church where he grew up on the district. He'd been there all his life. And now he was serving on staff there. And the question was if God called you to go to another place, would you? And he said, God won't do that. I said, Really? He said, Yes, I said, Really? He said, yes, this is where God has called me. And I don't remember the outcome of all that. I and I don't remember the outcome of all that. I just remember that he was fully convinced that's where God wanted him for the rest of his life. And I never go to a church, a new church. And I never go to a church, a new church, thinking, well, surely I can last three years here and then God will move us to the I always go saying I'm never moving again. As long as I'm in ministry. Somehow God seemed to have different But ideas. somehow God seemed to have different ideas a few times. What I'm asking is what I'm asking you're is where you are. Most I, I know you're comfortable where you are. Most of you are comfortable where you are. But what if God was to say to you? But what if God was to say to you, I want to make you uncomfortable for a little bit? I want to make you uncomfortable for a little bit. Would you be open to that? Would you be open to that? If you were sure that's what if you were sure that's what God wanted you to do. If we follow Christ, there are three steps. If we follow Christ, there are three steps that we must be willing to take. Step number one. Step number one. Step out of your comfort zone. Step out of your comfort zone. You've got to be willing to do that. You've got to be willing to do that if you're going to follow Christ. This emphasizes... In this emphasizes uh, in verse one details uh, the details of what the details that Abram must leave behind in order to obtain the promises that God intends for him. In order to obtain the blessings that God wants him to receive, there are some things he had to leave behind, and there are some who are and there are some who are comfortable in their old life and the reason they won't set their foot inside church and the reason they won't make a commitment to Jesus is because they don't want to leave the things that are familiar to them. 
their security blankets, whether it be sin or not. They're afraid to say yes to God because of where God might send them or what God might ask them to do. And God wants us to continually step out. And God wants us to continually step out of our comfort zones and trust Him with the unknowns that we face. I have to leave room. I have to leave room for God to guide me. And I believe if God was to show up on And I believe if God was to show up on your doorstep and say mine. And say, all right, here's the plan for the rest of your step, life. He laid out and step by step, he laid out all of the plans that he has for you. Well, first of all, it wouldn't require faith, would it? Well, also, well, also, I think it would be too much for us to handle. And I think, and I think God said, when we likes it him in faith and trust. when we follow him in faith and trust. Amen. Rather than in knowing. Rather than in knowing. You, get what I mean? mm -hmm. you get what I mean? Mm hmm If I if I go based on what if I, I if I go based on what I know and, and if God was to lay it all out and, and if God was to lay it all out for me and I just followed the steps. I would probably get stuck in my own. I would probably get stuck in my own ideas. And my own ideas, if I'm not careful, and my own ideas, if I'm not careful, can take me away from God rather than on His heels. Leaving, cleaving to Christ is leaving, cleaving to Christ is the norm of the Christian life. You got you've got to embrace that, folks. Leaving and cleaving. Leaving and cleaving. Never being so comfortable. Never being so comfortable with status quo that you are not pliable or movable. When good God calls. When good God calls. There's always a part. There's a parting from the comfortable. When he calls you to do something. Something has to be left behind. The, the second, step out of your comfort zone. Step out of your comfort zone and take one step at a time. In Genesis chapter eleven. In Genesis chapter eleven. There's another little phrase. It's easy to skip over. They're not careful. When when it uh, the writer mentions Sarah. He just makes this statement. And just makes this statement. As a matter of fact. She was barren. She could not bear children. She could not bear children. Just a small detail. Not really that big Just a deal. small detail. Not really that big a deal, is it? Yet that very fact Yet that very fact becomes a source of tension in chapter twelve. A lot of tension. A lot of tension. And if you're Abram and you're And if you're Abram and you're married to Sarai which is the reason she was mentioned in chapter 8. And you know that she cannot have children. And you know that she cannot have children. And then you turn around and hear God say, I'm going to make you into a great nation. I'd be scratching my head saying, how are you going to do that? I'd be scratching my head saying, how are you going to do that, Lord? My wife can't have kids. Right. Right. There's a... There's, a, there's another reason that God doesn't want us to know too much too soon. And I've sort of already mentioned it, but if I and I've sort of already mentioned it, but if I know too quickly, I might get overwhelmed and give up because I know it's going to be too hard. I was with Penny. Uh, I was with Penny uh, several weeks ago before her uh, heart surgery. Um, Penny's a lot like I am. Um, Penny's a lot like I am in this. When the doctor came in or the nurses would come in, she, she would remind them, by the way, I don't want to know anything. Do what you gotta do. Put me to sleep, do what you gotta do, I'll wake up and everything will be fine. I don't need any details. That's the way I feel. I just I just don't want to know. 
I just I just don't want to know. But then while I was there, but then the surgeons, while I was there, one of the surgeons came in. Boy, I've got to get through this. Don't I? So he began. Anyway, so he began. For 30 and I'm not exaggerating. For 30 minutes, he outlined every single thing they were going to do, and she was getting more and more anxious. I, I watched her. She she was she was ready to get out of bed and walk. She said, "I've changed my mind." And, and she said, you know, this, I don't really want to hear this. And he said, well, I have, to, I, do, I have to tell you. It's by law. I have to tell you what we're going to do to you. Um, and then it was over. She said, you know, it wasn't all that bad. And then it was over. She said, you know, it wasn't all that bad. And I've heard things that you and I've heard things that you've had to go through. And I thought, oh, well, I don't have to go through that. that. I don't think I could stand okay. it. Everything else that I've had. But everything else that I've had to go through my life, I've been able to stand by the grace of God. Amen. And so, I think, as Penny, I mean, Penny literally said, after the doctors left, the nurses left her room, before the surgery, she said, Pastor, I think I'm just not going to have this much. It's too much. I mean, she was seriously thinking about it. Also, you know, and of course, her, her mom, Miss Sarah, was sitting there too. But she wasn't privy to our conversation. We were we were on the side of her bad ear. Well, both of her ears were bad. But anyway, so she couldn't hear what we were talking about. God doesn't ask me to take a step. God doesn't ask me to take a step that is five miles up the road. He asked me to take the next step. The third thing, action lessons. Worry. The third thing, action lessons worry. I, I, I tend to overanalyze. I, I, I tend to overanalyze things. Uh, and when I overanalyze, it causes concern. And when I overanalyze, and worry, it causes concern. concern. <laughs> That's a quote from my wife's diary. <laughs> she, did, she didn't know I knew where she kept her diary. <laughs> but a lot of you feel that way, right? The more I think about the issue that's ahead of me, the more I think about an issue that's ahead of me, the, thing, the more anxious I become. The anxiety but here's the thing: when you take a step, because now, now I'm in it. The anxiety begins to dissipate. I'm thinking more about because now, now I'm in it. That I am about, and, and I'm thinking more about how it's going really than I am about what might happen. On the next step that God so my focus isn't really on the thing; it's really on the next step that God wants me to take. And taking actions regularly is a way of living in the moment that often deletes some of the fears of the future that we might have. And so the promise is, God goes with you. You take a step, God goes with you. You step out of your comfort zone, writer, God goes with you. Wrote this. One writer. What I love about this passage is that God called Abram when he was a Gentile. What I love about this passage is that God called Abram when he was a Gentile. While he was still apart from the one true God, Abram was called to part from that way of life, to pilgrim in the new way that leads to the promise, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what happens to all of us. Uproot your family and leave home. Jesus. Uproot your family and leave home. Jesus is your home. Jesus is our home. Amen. Jesus is your home when you place your trust in him. He is the promised land. And the point of pilgrimage of all of our party, of all of our and he is worthy of all of our party, of all of our leaving our comfort zones. Of whatever it takes to go leaving our comfort zones to go meet the new neighbor. And tell them if they haven't found a church yet, 
I know one that's, that will just love you crazy. Step out of my comfort zone. Step out of my comfort zone. And try to leave a smile with that person where I stopped. And try to leave a smile with that person where I stopped to. No, I used to. Buy coffee. I would go there to get coffee. Now I use no, coffee. used to. I would go there to get coffee. Now I use coffee as an excuse to go there to get to know those people and leave a smile on their face. You see the difference? Is our promised land. Jesus. And when we walk with him, is our promised land. It may include times of And when we walk with him, it may include times of discomfort, but he will always go with you. Take the road less traveled. I challenge you this week. The road that is not take the road less traveled. The other road, take it. The road that is not your compass is our The other road, take it. Father, our hearts are open to you. And see where God Our minds you. are open to you. Father, our hearts are where open to you. Where would you lead us this week? Our minds are open to you. you. Where would you lead us this week? If we had if we allowed you to. To step out. If we had the faith. To step out and step with you. Lord, where would you take us? What would you have us to do in your name? Please make us available and open to that as we move into our week. I pray in Jesus' name. Great man. Now we're going to hear a great song. Uh, as we close this morning, folks on the I love you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And look for the song Promised Land by Toby Mack. And uh, we love you guys. And we'll see you next time. We're here if you need us. And may God bless your heart and give you encouragement as we share.